I have a Python shell open again, and I've imported this file logic.py, which you can find in the Git repository linked below, which allows me to play around with propositional logic. In this case, let's take a look at some argument forms. We'll start by declaring variables using this vars function that takes the variable names as strings as its inputs. We saw two examples of argument forms by hand, so let's take a look at those. The first one said, if it's raining, then I take my umbrella. It is raining, therefore I take my umbrella. And this argument form actually has a name, which is modus ponens. We drew a truth table for modus ponens by hand, and I can do the same in Python. And using this truth table, we determined that because everyone who believes the premises does believe the conclusion, that this argument form is valid. We looked at a superficially similar argument form, which said, if it's raining, then I take my umbrella. I do take my umbrella, therefore it's raining. And this is not quite the same as modus ponens, because in modus ponens, our premise is the first part of the implication, whereas in this argument form, the premise is the consequence of the implication. So this argument form is called affirming the consequence. And we drew a truth table for affirming the consequence, which looked like this. And that told us that because it's possible to believe the premises, but not believe the conclusion, it's possible for the premises to be true while the conclusion is false. And therefore, this argument form is not valid. And I can see that in Python here. Let's take a look at some other quite common argument forms. Um, and we'll save ourselves the work of drawing the truth tables by hand by doing them with Python. So another common argument form says something like, if it's raining, then I take my umbrella. I don't take my umbrella, therefore it's not raining. And this argument form is called modus tollens. Let's see the truth table for modus tollens, which lets us see that in every row where the premises are true, the conclusion is true. And that means that modus tollens is valid. And again, there is a superficially similar argument form, which says that if it's raining, I take my umbrella. It's not raining, therefore I don't take my umbrella. And this argument form is called denying the antecedent because rather than saying that the second part of the implies is not true, we're saying that the antecedent of this implies premise is not true as a premise. Let's see the truth table for denying the antecedent. There are two rows here where the premises are true. In this row, I have true premises, but a false conclusion. So it doesn't matter what I see in other rows. If it's possible that the premises are true when the conclusion is false, then this argument form is not valid. And that's what I see. There's another argument form called a disjunctive syllogism, which says something like, I either like tea or coffee. I don't like tea. Therefore, I like coffee. Here's the truth table. There's only one row where these premises are true. And in this row, the conclusion is true. So the disjunctive syllogism is a valid argument. It's in a valid argument form. And again, there is a superficially similar argument called a dysfunctional syllogism, which says, I either like tea or coffee. I do like tea, therefore, I don't like coffee. So here's the truth table for that. And this argument is not valid because it's possible for the premises to be true when the conclusion is false. The reason this kind of argument's not valid is because this P or Q includes the possibility that both are true. So when I said, I like tea or I like coffee, it's possible for that to be true when I like both tea and coffee. And in that case, the conclusion that I don't like coffee would be false. 
and that's the row where we have a false conclusion with true premises. In this case, I do like tea and I do like coffee. So therefore, the dis dysfunctional syllogism is not valid. Another argument form is called the hypothetical syllogism, which says something like, if it's raining, then I take my umbrella. If I take my umbrella, then I will stay dry. And the conclusion is, if it's raining, I will stay dry. Here's the truth table. There are four rows here where the premises are true. But in each of those four rows, everyone who believes the premises does believe the conclusion. Or whenever the premises are true, the conclusion is true. And that means that the hypothetical syllogism is a valid argument for. Here's another one. This is called a dilemma, which says, I either like tea or coffee. If I like tea, then I will buy tea bags. If I like coffee, then I will buy coffee beans. And the conclusion is that I will either buy tea bags or I will buy coffee beans. The truth table for this will have 16 rows because there are four variables. So 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 gives me the 16 rows for this truth table. And again, there are quite a few rows where all of the premises are true. There are many kinds of people who would believe the premises of this argument. But we can check that every row where the premises are true, the conclusion is true. That's here, 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 and here. And that means that the dilemma is a valid argument form. There's one more common argument form which is kind of strange, which is called the principle of explosion. And this argument form says false, therefore p. And that's kind of a strange thing to have as a premise. If I just say that false is the premise, that means that this premise is always false. It's a contradiction. If I draw a truth table, then we can see that because there's one variable, I've got the row where it's true and the row where it's false. And I could ask, is this argument form valid? Well, let's think carefully about what it means for an argument, to be for argument form to be valid. What we mean is every time the premises are true, the conclusion is true. Everyone who believes the premises must believe the conclusion. Or another way of saying that is you never have true premises with a false conclusion. And that's actually the case for this truth table. There's no row where I have true premises but a false conclusion. I have a false conclusion here, but the premises are false. So this kind of person doesn't have to be convinced by my argument because they don't believe the premises. And the same goes for this row. This kind of person doesn't have to believe my argument because they don't believe the premises. Nobody should believe this premise, which is just false all of the time. So therefore, because nobody believes it, everyone who believes it does believe the conclusion. That's a bit like saying that every unicorn has a horn. Because there aren't any unicorns, you won't be able to find one that doesn't have a horn. So it's therefore true that all of them do have a horn. And that means that technically, the principle of explosion is a valid argument form. And that's what we see here. These aren't the only argument forms, of course. There are lots of them. We could come up with infinite variations of the kinds of arguments that we might want to make. These are just some of the common ones, and we can see whether they're valid or not. You can use this code yourself to test some other argument forms if you want, or you can follow along with the code that I've given here in this video just to learn how to use this logic.py file um, to investigate argument forms yourself.